In this lecture, I will guide you through the design of immobilized enzymes, focusing on the selection of the material support. Simply speaking, we can immobilize an enzyme just by mixing an enzyme solution with a solid material that plays the role of the support. As a result, we obtain an heterogeneous biocatalyst. This heterogeneous biocatalyst bridges biocatalysis with heterogeneous catalysis, harnessing the best features of bond walls. For example, the heterogeneous biocatalysts are extremely selective and work under mild conditions like enzymes, but at the same time can be easily separated from the reactants once the reaction is completed, but also integrated into several reactor designs, for example, packet bed reactors like heterogeneous catalysts. Moreover, if the immobilization methodology is well designed, we can achieve a significant enzyme stabilization that allows us to reuse our heterogeneous biocatalysts for many consecutive reaction cycles. This type of materials, the type of material that can be used to immobilize enzymes are quite diverse. We can use inorganic, organic, or bio-based materials. Now, I will give you some hints to choose the ideal material for enzyme immobilization. This material has to be compatible with the protein. Otherwise, it will denature the enzymes, leading to an inactive heterogeneous biocatalyst. Ideally, this material must be renewable, otherwise the, car the carbon fingerprint of, of our heterogeneous biocatalyst will negatively impact on the sustainability of the process. The material must have sustainable mechanical stability sorry, suitable mechanical stability for the reactor where it is going to be applied. For example, it's not the same steering a material with a propeller under a high steering regime where the shear, the shear forces are very high than packet back reactors where the pressure is or the pressure in our material is the main mechanical stress. Then we have to select a material that can be easily functionalized to introduce a variety of chemical groups to anchor the enzymes on the surface in a controlled manner. Details about the functionalization of the materials for enzyme immobilization have, be, have been given in the next lecture of this model, lecture 21.3. The most of materials used to support enzymes are porous particles because they can load high amount of enzymes achieving heterogeneous biocatalysts with high volumetric activity. For this reason, there are two important features to take into account when selecting materials. One, the porosity and the particle of the material. These two properties are going to define the mass transport restrictions of our heterogeneous biocatalysts. More details about this issue has been given in Lecture 2.3.1 of the Advanced Model. Moreover, the pore size of the material will define the immobilization methodology as we have to meet what is called the protein, the protein pore size match. If the pore size is larger than the enzyme size, we can use performance materials with different morphologies. However, if the enzyme is larger than the pores, we need to find a solution, otherwise the enzyme load will be very low and the resulting heterogeneous biocatalysis poorly active, uh, it will be poorly active. In this case, the only solution to immobilize our enzyme with high volumetric activity is developing a self-assembly methodology where the solid material is formed at the same time the enzyme is encapsulated or entrapped. This is the case of metal organic frameworks and their brothers, the covalent organic and hydrogen bonded organic frameworks. Having all features in mind, we can end up with highly complementary surfaces to fabricate sustainable and efficient heterogeneous biocatalysts. Besides the physicochemical properties of the materials, morphology is also very important when we mobilize enzymes. These properties are very important because depending on the material, we will have to use one type of reactor or the other. To find details, uh, more details about the type of reactors, you can go to lecture 2.3.4 of the advanced model. Briefly, 
we can have three main methodologies, sorry, we can have three main morphologies of the material for m cell mobilization. Particles, normally spherocons, membrane films, and monoliths. Particles can be porous or non-porous depending on their size. They normally have a high surface area to immobilize high amounts of enzymes per mass of material. They can be easily separated if the particle size is suitable or contains magnetic materials. They can be easily functionalized in batch processes and when the enzyme is immobilized, they, they can be integrated in several types of the reactors to perform both discontinuous and continuous processes. In the case of the membrane films, they can be filter disk, they can be integrated into the walls of the microreactors, or they can be formed by the deposition of whole fibers to increase the surface area. Membranes are low, high flow rates. They are very modular as they can be stacked one on the top of the other. They normally present a high surface a volume ratio and they are majorly applied in continuous processes. Finally, the third morphology, the third morphology is the monolith. The monoliths can be ceramics like the zeolites that are forming through a sintering process, but also they can be organic. Organic monoliths are nowadays suffering a revolution with the integration of 3D printing technologies or what is uh, also called additive fabrication. Monoliths can present a very high surface area so we can create multidimensional porosity, which allows us to load high m amounts and implement them for continuous processes. When we have defined the ideal features of our material, we must have to immobilize our m on one of those. So, but we have to look for which type of materials better fulfills our requirements based on their properties. In this slide, you can see a classification between organic and inorganic materials. With uh, inorganic materials, we can highlight silica as the most used one. Among organic materials, we can distinguish between the biomaterials like ketosans, aros, cellulose, and synthetic materials like polystyrene, acrylic materials, PLGA, or polyvinyl alcohol. Metal organic framework or MOF can be classified as a hybrid material as they are composed by organic ligands that chelate metals. If for some reason we need to use a nanomaterial with a size between 200 and 10 nanometers, they can be magnetic like iron oxide nanoparticles or non magnetic like silica or other metal oxides. In this table, you can see some of the most used materials for MC mobilization that are commercially available. As you can see, you can select the nature of the material from agarose to glass. You have different particle sizes and different pore sizes. Although the most of them are spherical particles, SEG are amorphous ones. All the carriers have been applied, uh, all these carriers have been applied to immobilize enzymes of different classes like oxidorentases, transferases, uh, hydrolysis, etc. Remarkably, tipsin has been thermally stabilized 10,000 times when immobilized on agarose beads. Silanase has been applied in flow with a TTN number of up to 10 up to 8 when immobilized on metacrylate beads or transaminase immobilized on SEG carriers achieve a TTN higher than 1,000 and the condition operations in a needless medium. Finally, the take-home messages are that the natural and physicochemical properties of the materials matters. There are three main color morphologies, particles, membranes, and monoliths, and there is no an ideal material or an ideal morphology to achieve the best immobilized uh, insects.